In this video, Lars Jakob, we're going to talk about circular business models. And we're going to discuss how a circular economy is dependent on many such circular business models. Yeah, because a circular economy is really just a sum of, of these kinds of, of business models. If we think about it at the aggregate level, we want to make sure that the resources we have available are kept at the highest value possible for the longest period of time. And we also want to make sure that the economy is restorative and regenerative, that we regenerate resources and that we are sort of spending wisely the resources we have at our disposal. In order to do that, we need circular business models in all sorts of industries, from groceries to tourism and from mobility to uh, technical uh, consumer goods, or garments like your shirts, I know. Have you bought it? Do you own it? Yes, I bought it. And when it's worn out, I'll probably give it to the Salvation Army. Hopefully they will use it and it can be reused by someone. Uh, or it will be recycled or hopefully upcycled if, if it's possible. But that's me and I'm hopefully <laughs> fully grown. But we have kids. What about your children? How, how do you deal with this with your children? This is a good question and we're seeing interesting business models pop up because the characteristic of children is that they grow and they grow quickly and sometimes more quickly than you would hope in terms of buying new clothes. That opens the space for a circular business model for children's garments and we're seeing that happening. Simon. Because one thing is, is Fretex, and, and they're part of a circular economy. They reuse uh, clothes or they recycle them. But with kids here who grow, and, and when you need new clothes and new garments all the time, especially here in Bergen with all the rain. That opens for business models like what we're seeing now, where you, instead of buying the clothes for ownership, you can really pay in a sort of subscription-based uh, model where you get access to the clothes that are the size of your child and when the child grows you can come back with the clothes and get a different size. And that of course means that the old clothes can be used by someone else. So what we're looking for here when we talk about circular uh, business models are business models that create, deliver and capture values in ways that are not extracting resources, making products and then throwing them away. We're looking for L not the linear one, but the circular one. And not only recycling, but also reusing uh, the, the clothes again and again and again. And this last point that Sveinung is making is really about what we call cascading. We want to have business models that sort of loop the resources, the materials and the components and the products again and again and again. This can be done in lots of different ways. Uh, at the lowest level, if you will, you can recycle the garments or you can recycle the metal and the zippers or whatever. At a higher level, you can start thinking about refurbishing. This can mean something like changing the arm of a shirt if it's torn or changing the zipper of your jeans when it's broken. Many companies are now building business models around exactly this kind of refurbishing logic. But there are higher levels as well, Sveinung. Yes, on the highest level, we have a rental model or a subscription model where the clothes are used again and again and again. This means that the business needs to create, deliver and capture value in a new way. For companies in the garment industry, for instance, this means that they have to change a mindset from selling a product, a shirt or jeans or whatever, to a customer who may only use it once or may throw it away to a new kind of thinking about where their revenues are going to come from. For instance, by offering the jeans, the shirt or the dress uh, through a rental model or some other subscription-based model that can allow for a higher usage of the product over time. This means that the company needs to deliver these services in a new way. So the company needs new resources, it needs to do different kinds of activities, it needs perhaps new partners, and it also needs to capture this value in a new way through, for instance, a kind of a subscription model. The sharing economy is also a subset of this kind of thinking, because the sharing economy is based on an idea that we want to have higher utilization of the resources that are already there. Instead of producing new cars, new office buildings or new slalom skis, let's rather make a platform through which 
consumers can share those assets, perhaps at a small price. This is a way for those companies that can facilitate this kind of sharing to make money from being the platform through which people who have excess resources can share them with people who are in need of those resources. We started out this video by arguing that a circular economy is dependent on circular business models. For managers, this is an innovation challenge. They need to redesign their business model. Think of new products and services. They need to deliver this in new ways and they need to capture value in new ways.